Morse Fall Prediction How to Move Data from Long View to Wide View First we should review the Morse Fall Scale. This is a survey instrument that assigns values to specific historical questions that are then added up to give you a fall risk score. So history of falling, immediate or previous, if no, would have a zero score. If yes, would have a score of 25. If there are more than or equal to two medical diagnoses in the chart, then you'd add 15 points. And similarly for ambulatory aid, intravenous therapy, the nature of gait, if normal, weak, or impaired, and what weak, impaired, is fully defined here. You add all the scores up, less than 25 is low risk, 25 to 45 is moderate risk, greater than 45 is high risk. In CLG, we have a finding, or actually a series of findings, all with the stub called Morse, Morse colon unsteady walk-fall interventions, Morse colon history of falling, Morse colon history of fall interventions. The overall score is what's called the Morse fall risk score. That's the sum total of all those scores together. How would you create a spreadsheet that would actually have for each time the survey is given a row for that survey and separate columns for each of the different Morse survey questions. So first you have to build a finding set in CLG. And here are all the Morse finding scores. And we call it Morse All and it's a finding set. I've built it already. Now let's take a look for January 2016. How would we find the, all the Morse scores that happened in the hospital? Well, first you'd build an event collection because you want to have more than one finding. You don't want just the first finding, you want all of them. You want to find all the admissions in January 2016. And then you want to find all the Morse scores when in the hospitalization. So these two lines, first, all the admissions in January of 2016, and they're all the Morse findings when in the admission. And now you'll note, and the index event line, we're pointing to the second line. We want to get all the Morse results, not the admits and the Morse results. So we have the index line pointing to this line. Remember, wherever the index line points, a browse will show the detail for the line that it is pointing to. Now we do a browse on this event collection. We ask for the event date time, the event type, the findings type, the findings value. And after I do a little cleaning up and sort of renaming, I end up with four columns. The patient ID, which is multiple times, the type, which are the different Morse questions, the values that have been collected for that, and the date time. But this gives me a very long list, and it doesn't organize the output the way I want it. Remember, I want to change from this long view to a wide view. I want each row to have a unique patient and date time. And I want each row to have all the columns of the survey instrument collected at that date time. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet, or more important, the CSV file that was output. And note that I've cleaned up some of the names and I've eliminated some of the columns. So I'm going to enlarge all the columns so you can see them. Here's a patient ID multiple times. Here's the different Morse findings in the long view. Here are the values that are actually assigned. 
And here is the date time, repeated over and over again. And now what I'm going to want to get is I'm going to want to get a row with a patient ID repeated, but a different date time for each of the survey instruments and all the different types as columns. This is relatively easy to do in Excel. First you go to Insert, and you click on Pivot Table. Excel automatically identifies the space where the data is, and it opens up a Pivot Table. Now I can bring in Patient ID into the rows, and I can bring in Date Time in the rows as well. Now if you have Excel 2010-2007, you will see the date time here. One of the new features of Excel 2016 is that it automatically does this grouping, which is somewhat irritating because that's not what I want. So I'm going to right click on the grouping and I'm going to click on ungroup. And now you see I have the date and the date time. Here we have on January 31st at 423, January 31st at 1527, which is 327 p.m., and January 31st, 1620. So there was a lot of Morse coding going on here. So I have the patient ID and the date time. Now I want the type in my columns. And here are fall risk, gate transferring, all the different survey information they've collected. And now I'm going to bring value into the value section. Note it says count of value, and you'll note that each one of these has a single count because the survey instrument requires a single result for each person and their date time, which is what you'd expect. But I don't want the count, I want the actual value. So I go to value field setting. And I note that right now it's on count. I also know there's only one value in each one. So I can choose average, and if you take the average of only one thing, it is that value itself. And here you have the actual values. Here's the full risk score of 60, 60, 70, 50. Okay. But there's a lot of other noise here that we have to start cleaning up. We'll go to options. open up the options here. Totals and filters. We notice there are all sorts of totals here which we don't really want. So we're going to get rid of the grand totals for row, grand totals for columns. They're gone now. This subtotal here really adds no real value to us. We don't want the subtotals, so I'm going to get rid of that. Notice how all the subtotals are gone. And now what I want to do is I want to repeat this 1393 in its column over and over again. I can just look here, the 1393, this patient 1393, here's the date time, and all the different values in the columns. But I actually want 1393 on each row, so I right-click on that. I go to Field Settings. I go to Layout and Print. I check off Show Item t Labels in Tabular Form, Labels in Tabular Form, and I repeat the item labels, those are the two changes we make. So I go to Field Settings, I choose Layout and Print, I go to Show Item Labels in Tabular Form, I check off Repeat Item Labels, I hit OK, and now I have a spreadsheet that has the patient ID number, 
is date time, and all the individual columns with the survey questions, and each row represents one survey. I've successfully moved from a long view to a wide view. And if I want to save it as a simple table, that's simple enough. I just file Save As, Column 2. I want to save it as a CSV. It warns me I'm going to lose all my formatting. I don't care. Now I can close this out. I can open it up again. And there I have it, without any of the formatting and with separate rows for each survey with its date time and the values. So I've successfully moved from a long view to a wide view. And you'll see this in many things. You can use this for adolescent sexuality, some of the asthma survey instruments. It's a very common need to move from a long view to a wide view.